And hello everyone, welcome back. We would be taking a look at, in this episode, a Cold War tank. Now this is the American M47 Patton, but under the service of either West Germany or Austria. Now more on that later, and without further ado, we'll get into the parts, the sprues, and some feedback along the way. Now for this sprue, you have here some of the parts for the turret, the gun and also some on the hull. Now on closer inspection, you can see that the upper turret piece already has most of its parts molded in. So you have here the tank commander's cupola and also the mounting point for the M2. Other than that, the surface details are relatively nice. Some mounting points here and there. And also on the mounting points for the mantlet cover. Lower piece is as is. You have here the storage bin on the rear of the turret and also some jerry cans that you would see mounted on these sides. You also have here the gun mantlet. You have here an extra M2 but Tamiya did provide yet another M2 set which we would be taking a look at later. Here you have vision ports that would go on the sides of the turret. You also have here hatches for both the tank commanders and loaders cupola. Other than that you have here the grab handles and also the slight bustle racks here on the sides. Moving on you have here the back panel for the hull the louvers of the engine deck and quite surprisingly you also have here a full-sized engine for the pattern now you can just go ahead and paint that install it in and if ever install these louvers in an upright position so you can see the inside or well, with the engine to depict let's say maintenance these would be for the exhaust covers the kit also provides you with an assortment of muscle brakes, so just refer to the instructions to see which version or which army used what kind of muscle brake. And as you can see, all of them are molded in two pieces, so you would have to get rid of the seam line in the middle. You also have here the 90mm gun, which again molded in two pieces. Other than that, most of the parts would be going around the tank, detailing most of its exterior. And here you have the hull pieces. So you have here the lower hull piece, the upper hull piece, and then also the exhaust pieces. Here you also have the side skirts that you would see on the tank. On closer inspection of the upper hull, you would find that the fuel caps are already molded in, as well as some of the louvers here and also here. In the front, you have your guide indicators to where you'd be placing some of your parts. And on closer inspection, you can also find that there are hinge molds already on the hull piece. As for the lower hull, you can see here that the suspension is finely detailed as well, and even the underside of the tank. Now for this sprue, you can see most of the running gear already. Here you have most of the road wheels, and also here. You have the parts for the drive sprocket. Here you have all the return rollers. You have the hatches for the driver and also radio operator. The dampers on the suspension as well as the suspension arms right here. While the rest are the caps that would be securing the road wheels to the suspension arms. And for the others you have here the gun travel lock pieces. Now for the other pieces right here you have 
the headlights, and also other pieces you would find on the front of the hull. You have here the headlight guards, and here you have other pieces that go into the suspension. Some pioneer tools here and there, and also more attachment pieces for the suspension. Moving back, you can find here some stowage bins that would go on the sides of the tank. Here's a 30 cal that would be mounted on the bow of the tank in a nicely detailed bow machine gunner position. Now here we have several other sprues. Firstly, let's take a look at this one. Now upon reviewing the parts again, this would be for what you would find on a West German setup. Now for the West German setup as depicted in the kit, you would have the mantlet cover as well as this type of gun which you would find additional mantlet attached to. You'd also have the smoke discharger panels here and also the smoke dischargers themselves. You also have here the periscope guard that would go on to the driver and radio operator's hatches. For this one, you have the convoy indicator, if I'm not mistaken, that goes on the back of a German tank. And again, you have here additional jerry cans that you would find for stowage. Now this is the interesting piece that I found with the kit. This is a two-piece molded M2 Browning 50 cal machine gun. And as you can see right there, the main pieces are molded individually. However, the shroud is hollowed out so you can insert the barrel of your choice, so either with this handle right here on the bottom or not. Additionally, you have stowage for ammo cans. And for this one, you have the option to build either a belt fed or at least a fed ammo box that is ammo going inside the machine gun already, or if not, one that is closed. Next, you have here the commander or loader's figure. Just one figure right here, and on closer inspection, fairly detailed facial feature. So, you have additional sidearms here, and also goggles, a rucksack here, and also some stowage bins and box. Now, this is another West German piece right here. Let's focus that in. Now this one is the rain guard and from what was said in the instruction booklet, the West Germans added this to avoid precipitation that would or might go into the engine deck area. So these are just plastic strips that you would be attaching to parts on the turret. Of course, there are indicators as to where they should go. Next, you have here a piece of string. So this would be for the tow cable that you would attach to the rear of the tank. And the decals, they are honestly interesting. So you have here decals for both West German use, the Bundeswehr use, and also Austrian Armed Forces. And the black ones you see right here are for detailing the periscopes, but you can go ahead and not use them and just paint them yourselves. Now you might be wondering, why is there an iron cross or three iron crosses that are for um, the Wehrmacht use? Now you have to remember that the old movie, The Battle of the Bulge, depicted M47 patterns as German tanks or Wehrmacht tanks. If I'm not mistaken, they were used to depict tigers in the Ardennes. So if I'm not mistaken, the kit provides you these decals in order for you to perhaps try and replicate that scene or that tank from the movie. But of course, it's up to you if you want to. But I will go ahead and leave a picture right here of that tank. 
So next, you have here the rubber band tracks. As you can see, they just connect right there. Not, not a lot of problem. The interior is nicely designed. Very little cleanup, such as that. And the exterior is also nicely done. You also have extra track links right here, which I would be figuring out the use for. Now lastly, we have here the manual. So here's a brief background of the tank in multiple languages. You have English, you have German, and then also you have French. You can see here that vehicle parts are product of Italeri. So once again, this is a Tamiri box of Italeri's patent. So from the get-go, you can see here that A, the indicator A, is for the West German Army build, and the indicator B is for Austrian Armed Forces. So most of them you just follow as is until you get to some of the pieces. And here we go. As you can see, you can detail the engine, slap it on in, and once you attach that upper hull, since the lovers are molded separately, you can probably go ahead and glue them open for maintenance. Now once again, just follow most of the parts until such a time you get to around this area where you're doing the rear panel. Because you would have to note that this part is for the West German Army. So if you're going to do that, you're going to have to place this on the rear panel. Once again, just follow, just follow, follow. Here's the tow cable. And then on the turret, as you can see here, they call for decals. But again, you can just go ahead and omit their use. Here again. For the West German use, this is the plastic strips that I showed you that would act as the rain guards for the sides of the turret, also there. But if we're going to do the Austrian version, you can go ahead and ignore using these parts. Also for this one, you have the smoke dischargers that were used on the West German version. The mantlet right there. And also this. And here we go. The assembly for the M2 machine gun. So like I mentioned earlier, this is in multiple pieces. Which is quite nice as it gives you more detailing for the gun. And again can see that it's in a fed position or a closed one. You can also model this as a stored version. So just put the clamp right there and just turn it around and lock it into place. Stowage accessories right there and you're free to put them wherever you please. This figure is quite versatile as you can see. It's generic, but you can go ahead and switch up the decals on the cockade of the field cap or the tanker's cap to depict either the West German or Austrian army use. Now this could act as either the tank commander or the loader. So for the markings, you can see there, West German army. These would be the markings for that. Then you also have here the Austrian armed forces. Numbers and tactical markings right there. So again, this one right here, the Wehrmacht Iron Cross. It is from the movie and it's up to you if you want to do it that way or save for another German kit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I honestly like how things are looking and I'm really excited to build this one. 
So that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up. But if you didn't, leave a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of the tank, what you think of the kit, or any feedback in general. And I also noticed that a small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you have time, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It would really help the channel grow. And with that, thanks for watching. And until next time, stay safe, keep modeling. Goodbye.